Hey there, thank you so much for joining me. This is Infinity and it is currently 8.56 on February 26th. Huh, I like it. 8.56 on February 26th and we are here for our full moon meditation. Um, so yeah, almost nine o'clock here in the Pacific. I've got this light going on here and I don't know how to make it. It's like, it's a reflection, but I can't really figure it out. Like when I'm, so it's there. Uh, how was your day? My day was challenging. <laughs> very challenging. Uh, and I'm sorry, it's extra yellow or orange in here. I just, I can't stand brighter light than this right now. Um, I can, however, these guys are kind of bright. Let's turn that down. There we go. So yeah, today was, today was pretty challenging. Um, it was just kind of like everything. Oh, I want to take this off. It was just kind of like everything, you know, like I don't even want to get into it, but I actually started this video uh, around 2.30 or 3 and it got deleted, <laughs> long story short, got deleted instead of hitting like save, I hit delete, my finger slipped, and all of a sudden was gone. And I was like, uh, what just happened? And so what happened was, is that I deleted it and started saving it, which was awesome. I even like try to see if there's ways I could recover it. And I found this program that I downloaded to do it and it found it, but it wants like $90 for it. I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I don't need it that bad. Uh, and it's, and yeah, so whatever. Here we are. I had been guided to pull some oracle cards before the meditation. I usually am. Uh, and so I pulled, I don't even remember what they are now. <laughs> Honestly. It is nine o'clock. I did this literally six hours ago. I couldn't, I couldn't just go right into it because I had a consultation. I had one of my two hours that turned into three hour uh, consultations with a new client um, for the Evolve Now program. I do these two hour free consultations. Uh, and then we, <clears throat> we do a mini um, energy healing there at the end. And, and they do tend to go even longer than two hours, not going to lie. It's just time flies and there's so much to talk about and then doing the mini healing. So, so yeah, here we are. Time flies and it's nine o'clock, nine o'clock right on the dot. And, uh, so yeah, it's been a challenging day. I'm not going to get into it because nobody wants to hear me complain about my day, but it's been literally one thing after another, after another, I think I just have to, <laughs> It's almost like really comical. Like if today was a TV show or a movie, you would be like, this is just stop it. Like just stop. It's just too stupid and too much. Other than my, my consultation, that was fantastic. It was beautiful and fantastic. I loved it. I loved her. I'm super excited about doing this with her. She's so ready, so excited. Uh, Aside from that, like bookending my whole like first part of the day and second part of the day was just like serious. <laughs> One thing after another, you have those days you're just like, and it's the full moon and well, it's the day before the full moon and may as well be the full moon, especially with this full moon. And so, you know, it's just that the tension in the body is just tight and you just can't help that. The, the, the higher vibration, vibrational station that you resonate at normally will keep you balanced. But when these energies are so intense, uh, it's, it's like, 
but I mostly laughed myself through it. It's been really silly. Um, so anyway, enough about that. I was getting to pulmonology cards. Love these cards. Love these, love these, love these cards. Um, and Hidden World Oracle. And so I thought I was going to pull one and I ended up pulling two. And so I've been spending the last bit of time just trying to figure out like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to pull new cards? Am I supposed to see if these same cards come out? Am I supposed to put back all the Moonology cards? I really like these cards. <laughs> it was that just for me? What are we doing here? And I'm like going back and it's just taking forever to get this started because I'm just, well, I just got another thing I just had to deal with. It was <clears throat> in the list of stupid for the day, to be quite honest. And, uh, and I just, I just couldn't decide. So I decided I was just going to start this video anyway, and we would just find out together because why not? So that's what we're going to do. We are going to, I'm going to turn these cards face down in front of me. I'm going to grab my pendulum that I love so much. I hope you have a pendulum. I'm going to be doing a pendulum video coming up here soon about, um, like, I just barely pick it up and it's already like, let's play. <laughs> barely have to touch it. Um, but it's just going back and forth. Neutral, 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 neutral from, let's see. Ooh, let's do, let's do some fun stuff. <laughs> uh, for me to you. Uh, and I have my big jacket on because I got really, I got cold earlier. Um, I had to go outside and it's cold. I live in the mountains. It's cold. It's probably like 30 degrees here, something like that. Uh, but I am getting warm, so that's nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ask, oh man, did I forget my torch? You're gonna have to bear with me. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Boy. <laughs> um, Oh, great. And then my shirt got, I got all wet. And I have no idea how I did it. Oh, maybe I was, I was leaning on my sink to look at the moon. Yeah, that's probably when I did it. I forgot that part. <laughs> that is a wet spot. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, <sighs> center myself here. Um, let's just put, it's just hard to see when it's low. So it's just hard to say totally still, but you can see that I don't like, you know, actually fuck it up if I do that. <laughs> actually it doesn't spin at all if you do this. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, or how, however you would, there you go. I guess you would do it like that. Try to, yeah, that's like me making it go. And then there's the difference with me not, you know, just energy going. It'll just start getting faster and faster without me actually moving. And so it's obvious I am not actually moving it, but it's moving on its own. Um, so anyway, neutral is going back and forth or just not moving at all. And then yes is uh, clockwise and no is counterclockwise pretty simple from my point of view. Um, so simple question, simple question. Are, no, let me start over. Oh, start to yawn when the, oh, when the divine counterparts start to share space with me. It's weird. It's weird. It's like, it does something to my energy and it makes me yawn or shiver and shake or do different things when I start to like connect to, to, to Gaia, the archangels, my own, really tapping with my own um, 
guardian angel and you know that kind of stuff so anyway so let me frame the question because that's important how you frame a question um this thing could calm down just a wee bit <laughs> but whatever uh do i start all over <laughs> yes. So we're going to start all over with the tarot and I mean, sorry, with the Oracle, we're going to start all over with the all we're going to start over with the Oracle. All right. Okay. So second question. Do I share the cards I already pulled? Yes. Okay. So I didn't really let it keep going there, did I? I just, it started to go and that's good enough for me. I don't need it to do its thing, but we can see it do its thing. We can see it do its thing. Do I share, do I share what I've already pulled? Like this instead, I can feel my arm getting in the way. Do I share what I already pulled? And there it starts to go. See it starting to do its thing. It's actually moving my arm. I'm not moving it. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the, that's the fact. So there we go. There's our yes. We can get it to go. It's probably it's going to start going faster and faster and faster and faster. And I can just do this all day. It actually feels really good to like just be connected to this energy like this. So when you use a pendulum, basically what you're doing is connecting with your higher self that knows all about the situation, knows what the answers are, and uh, kind of looks like it disappears there, doesn't it? That's kind of cool. Uh, and so it channels down the energy to make it go yes or no, and that's pretty much how it works. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Um, I'm going to show you what I got and then we're going to start over and uh, and see what we get the second time around. So we get we get more, I guess. Um, so for the we'll go in order. I remember which ones came. Not sure if I'll remember exactly the order, but it's not necessarily important. I ended up getting six cards and that was first it was five and then I heard no we're getting six for the six full moons or sorry for the six new moons that are all in 23 degrees of their perspective, you know, whatever they were for those past five and then going into March with the sixth new moon at 23 degrees. Um, and that is in Pisces and we're in Pisces. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be sun and moon in Pisces, which is gonna be very, very cool um, as far as the energy goes and stuff. So the first card that we got is the end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn. The end of a tough cycle approaches and well, Yay, right? And that sounds fantastic because I can certainly use a shift in the energy because it has been tough. Not going to lie. It has been tough. And the next card was show the world the, wait, let me come here. Show the world the real you. Full moon in uh, Aquarius, full moon in Aquarius, show the world the real you. So two full moons came out. And then we had, I believe, don't let your past hold you back. Don't let your past hold you back. South node. So we want to go forward and not backward. And so when we allow energies and, um, traumas from the past relationships energy from the past to dictate our now and our future we um we are not allowing ourselves to move forward so and we're literally being held back 
So if you've watched my videos, you know that I, I've done this. Um, there's this cord cutting has been very, very important and it's come up again and again and again. And um, it's like a prerequisite before you get into, into my healings with me is to cut cords so, you, so you're as energetically sound as you can be aside from some other stuff. But um, energy cords are a real thing. They're attached to people, situations, experiences, traumas, addictions, um, jobs, money situation, I mean, all sorts of ways that our whole world is connected with energy. And it doesn't just, because we're not in that situation anymore, because we don't know that person or any of those things, doesn't mean that the energy isn't still very active between the two things. We could have had a, that's what PTSD is. You have a situation of trauma and experience in 1990 and you're triggered just like it happened in 2020. Why? Because there's an energy cord. And until you take that energy and, and disassociate it with what it's connected to, you are right there with it. So this is also why it's difficult for people to get over others in relationship, especially if they were like broken up with somebody that they were really in love with. Um, that's just extraordinarily difficult because your, your connection is, that cord is so strong, um, but you can detach. You can even reset energies with people that are in your life and situations that are currently happening in your life. You can cut cords with reset the energy. So anyway, I have an ebook about it, cutting energy, the importance of cutting energy cords and a companion meditation that goes with it. They're both free. And, um, and so anyway, don't let the past hold you back is a direct, why do I do that? Is a direct, um, message about cutting cords. It's even, even being shown here, like, look, look at the lines, look at the cords. So let them go. It work to let them go. And the next one, I believe we had the next one was the answers you need are coming full moon. And I did it again, full moon in, I, that's the last time I'm doing it. I swear to God, I don't know why I keep doing that. <laughs> um, the answers you need are coming full moon in Gemini. So we have the twins coming in with the answers you need are coming. And I really believe this speaks to people, person, especially person for some of us, we're, the, we're coming into the time where um, soul family, soulmates, and, um, and even twins are going to be entering our lives, coming together. And this says the answers you need are coming. So, so it's like, it's not to say that anybody completes us, but in some situations, that's kind of what it is. It's like, we have a question. There's an answer. This, this Gemini is saying twin, twin, same, same. And so your question is your answer. Your answer is your question. And some of us, for a lot of us, for most of us, we're meant to be partnered up in many different ways to do what we're meant to do, including who's, you know, in our lives very personally and intimately. And, um, and so this is to say that, ha ha, this is to say that we are, um, we are to expect answers to come, to expect those to come into our lives to help us get those answers, to be open to, to this coming in. Okay, and then we got a win-win outcome is forecast and this is be again with this is a full moon in libra so balancing energies we got the uh the the message that we have to really pay attention to this moon cycle oh, oh, oh hello hello <laughs> there we go that we have to really pay attention to this moon cycle um from uh, February 27th to March 28th, this moon cycle with our, uh, 
new moon on the 13th, which is also the last day of our March Stargate from 3.3 to 3.13. Then we have the uh, equinox. Hello, hello, camera. <laughs> really? <laughs> Okay, guess I need to be closed. Then we have the equinox um, on the 20th, and then we have the full moon on the 28th. So this period of time that we're dealing with between now, it just counted, let's just count the full moon, but just in, in uh, February, we've had so much, we had our Stargate 2.2 to 2.12, we had the new moon 2.11, we had um, Mercury retrograde, the stellium, the great uh, Aquarius stellium in, uh, oh my God, this camera, seriously. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is my day to day, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, honestly, right now. <laughs> Hello, camera. Stop it. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be back. <laughs> okay. Who needs to see me clearly? Who needs to see me clearly? Does anybody, do you care? Like, really? Okay, so we had the stellium, we had Mercury retrograde, we had, uh, oh, the portal, the 222 portal that we just had a couple days ago. So it was that four days ago, we had the 222 portal. That was big time in our lives as far as a, a major um, incoming uh, wave of energies for the light body collective for divine union. Divine union meaning, uh, <laughs> Divine union, meaning uh, divine union with ourselves, with our soul selves, our higher selves, our souls. Um, people have all different, you know, names and and, <laughs> and uh, titles for that, and what that is, um, and what that means. Goodness gracious, with this thing right now, I can't. Uh, it's frustrating. This is this has been my day. This has been my day. Okay, so. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> just, this is, yeah. Okay. So we've had so much going on. I'm just going to ignore it. I can't. So we've had so much going on with this that in, in the energy leading up to this full moon and going into this next period. Um, and this win win, it makes me think of moon, uh, full moon to full moon, energies full moon to full moon. And um, I was told that in one of the reads that I did for the full moon, I can't remember which one it was. I tried to figure it out today, but I just really didn't have time to look into the videos. So if anybody knows and remembers which video it was that I did that was about, um, that I very specifically talked about the the moons <clears throat> i just have to look at the pictures i'll remember but if you happen to remember chime in um but anyway uh a win-win forecast or a win-win outcome is forecast and um this means a lot of things this just means we're we're going to connect and dip where this is very similar to this this thing here the answers you need are coming so it's like question answer balance coming in so we have the twins and then we have the scales. So we have the same with the two thing going on. Um, answer question, win, win. And that is energy having to do within us and, and connecting with somebody outside of us or people outside of us, soul family, soulmates, people like that. Not necessarily romantic, but it very, very well could be. Um, so expect that if you are on the path of, if you've been somebody who has been really taking yourself and your spirituality seriously, you haven't engaged in, you know, connecting with all sorts of people all the time, you know, romantically, sexually, in that sort of sense. And you, um, you've come into a certain point in your life where you feel like, yeah, like this would be a good time for, for a partnership. Um, if, or if that was to take place, I feel like I have things kind of set about things and I can definitely use that, then you, you it's time to put that out there. 
um, not in a desperation kind of way, but just to be open. And I will be doing a meditation for, for uh, being open and, and receiving like a new love partnership. I'll be doing that very soon. The next card that we got earlier was prosperity, uh, almost did it, prosperity lies ahead. This made me so happy. New moon in Taurus, prosperity lies ahead. So um, we have a good mix here of um, water, fire, earth energy with all of these new moons and these full moons, but prosperity lies ahead really means just that we are going to, we're opening up. You could see this beautiful, like, uh, uh, this energy around the bull and he's just so confident and it's just abundance. It's like, that's what it feels like to be connected to the abundance matrix is what I'm hearing. So just allow yourself to receive. If you haven't done my meditation for, uh, uh, clearing abundance box and hearing healing the money wound. I highly suggest that you do that. Um, <clears throat> highly, highly suggest that you do that ASAP because we want to have this beautiful energy coming in, money coming in, flow of abundance coming in, connecting with the abundance matrix. And um, the more intentional we are about that, the more that we do um, practice uh, using and feeling and wanting and loving money, bringing it into us, knowing how, how good and rich it feels to have that support from money. It is a tool like a hammer a hammer can be used as a weapon as something very destructive and very violent or a hammer can be used to make a beautiful house that you live in it depends on how you use that tool and that's what money is we need money to pay for things to to feed ourselves to to pay for homes and, and clothes and food and 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 everything and so that's a beautiful tool and so we need to be grateful and see it like that and want that flow to come in and and when we and when we send it out to to be grateful that we had it and send it out with a really, really good feels about it. Like, yes, take my money and prosperity to you. And thank you for, for whatever it is, service or, or goods um, that you're giving me in exchange for this money, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. And lastly, lastly, this card was so perfect. So perfect is balanced spirituality and practicality with full moon in Pisces. So what's really cool about this is that, like I said, we have the new moon in Pisces, and this is to balance out full moon, new moon in Pisces, because that full moon at the end of the month, um, hmm, what is it? Now I'm spacing. Let's take a look with my moon app. Bear with me, family. Right, it's in Libra. Right, okay, I'm remembering this now. So, uh, back to music. So, again, we had that win-win. So we do, we did pull the card for the full moon in March. So full moon to full moon. Remember, um, we have this. Uh, um, we didn't pull pull the the actual full moon in Virgo, at least not yet, um, balance spirituality and practicality. So this came out, this is the, the fishies, Pisces, we're in Pisces now, even though this is the Virgo full moon, those two energies together really pushing us to, um, to come into balance with, with, ourselves and who we are and our authenticity and our spirituality and what really connects us to our passions and what we're meant to be doing and um and our to our inner child another meditation that i had out this past week healing the inner child and integrating the inner child taking responsibility being the caretaker and really having this energy as a co-companion all of the time which is super important as we ascend to be really connected with our to our our inner wonderment and 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 um that excited child energy that even when we were children for a lot of us we didn't get to experience very much of so 
very important with that, the balance of spirituality and practicality also speaking to, and a big theme was to plan out our month, full moon to full moon and beyond, and like into that next month, because it's the 28th of March. And, um, and so just all of March, but the, you know, the idea was full moon to full moon and really thinking about mapping out what are the priorities for the month. Like for me, it's my, um, my art meditations and my, my writing, my articles, my eBooks, getting that, getting, there's a bunch that are just ready to go. It's like 80% there for all of that stuff for me that I need to that I need to, to flush out and get out so we can um, move on to the next to the next phase of stuff that's so just been very stagnant. So if you have something like like that, things that have been in wait or put off because other things have taken priority, it's not to say necessarily this is procrastination. I, I I'm not saying that I don't procrastinate, but at the same time, when you know you're in flux with energy and it's like energy here, energy there. So it's not like I started doing art and then I just sat around for three months. It was, I do art, but I've been extraordinarily busy with writing and videos and podcasts and peelings and this and that. And so there's only so much time and energy that a person has. So everybody has these, these blocks of energy and things that come in and out. And so we need to look at the landscape of what we're connected to, especially from that inner child point of view, from that soul-based point of view, and, and take it from, from that and connect with our guidance, connect with our guides. If you need help with that, I can certainly help you with that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Please reach out to determine what it is that, that you should be focused on and, and, and go into it with the sense of prioritizing and scheduling even, being practical about what it is that you want to accomplish and how you're going to accomplish it and um, not stacking too much for up for yourself because we tend to do that for ourselves. And I do anyway, <laughs> I do. I tend to stack up a lot for myself and maybe that's just, I don't know, let's not get into that. But um, <laughs> I tend to, you know, put too much on the plate, not be able to eat it all, you know, one of those things. So, so anyway, those, those were the cards, balance, spiritual, spirituality and practicality. Um, prosperity lies ahead. The answers you need are coming. Uh, a win-win uh, outcome is forecast. Don't let the past hold you back show the world the real you i want to show you this one show the world the real you just let it flow who, who show you the real you who are you who are you and then let that flow out into the world don't hold back when you're when you're guided to share to be to express to to uh to any of those things do it just don't think too hard about it just do it the end of a tough cycle approaches is what we started with. And that to me is just amazing, amazing energy with this Capricorn full moon energy. Um, so in the end here, we have one, two, three, four, five full moons, um, which is exactly where we ended up where we were at in real time, right? That's where we're at in real time. Um, the only exceptions here besides full moons are the south node, don't let the past hold you back. And that new moon in Taurus, of course, prosperity lies ahead. New moon in Taurus. So we want to integrate this new moon prosperity lives ahead energy in with the energies that we're thinking about here today with this full moon and every all this others, all these other messages that came out. Now um the other thing we have going on is the hidden worlds oracle and I pulled two cards. The first card was sacred journey Sacred journey. There we go. Sacred journey. It says, um, 
introversion, seeker, self-knowledge. And then we have the crystal path. Mineral spirits, crystal beings. So we got these two cards and they're extremely, um, I didn't bring my book. Oh, no, there it is. I'm like, I could have sworn I had this book here. Um, there, so they even look very similar. They look, these, these two cards look so much alike. It's kind of silly how similar these cards are, but of course they're different, but they look really, really similar. Um, so, do I have enough light here? I think I do actually. So what I'm gonna do here is, um, I do have my off. Wow, I heard a chime anyway, that was weird. Uh, card number 30 is Sacred Journey. So I am going to read about, I am going to read this to us because like I'm following directions. I can't just tell you the card and, and not read it to you. So sorry. If, <laughs> I don't need, oh, it is turned down all the way. Okay. There we go. That's better. Okay. Sacred journey, introversion, seeker, self-knowledge. You have walked alone for some time now. You have turned inwards to that great path that lies inside of us all. You have taken its many tributaries into the soul of your own self. You have discovered the things so many hide from themselves and you have brought them to the surface, examined them and found their beauty and their sorrows. And after knowing them, integrating them, uh, have gone deeper still. Within that silent place at the heart of, of you, there is another temple, the temple of your soul, where your precious, most sacred heart has laid in waiting for you. A sleeping beauty, a wise wizard at the gate of your truth. And you have kissed your soul and accepted the truth of yourself. With this comes a reawakening and a return to the world. Now your stillness and repose, which all the world has seen but not understood, will begin to express the wisdom it found at the heart of you. To many, too many journey outwards, expecting to find the answers outside, in gurus and teachers and places and other people, in medicines and therapies, and all have their part to play. But if we do not seek the chalice within, we cannot drink from the cup of our soul. The crystalline waters of the self and this friend you have done. The journey you have taken within has been challenging and full of risk, but you have made it to the, to the center of you. And now you, that you know what treasure lies within, you can rise again and re-enter the world and know fully who you are and why you are here. And illumination, my time of deep quiet leads to personal breakthrough. Ah, so beautiful. So this is just really validating whatever journey you have so far, whatever healing you've done so far, whatever inner, inner, uh, inner work, shadow work, um, going through the dark night of the soul, um, anything, anything that you've done any, in any way, shape or form that you've been um, trying to and working with your guides, working with your energy, working with your soul, going into meditation, doing all that good stuff. Um, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, it's validating that. It's just validating that. So, um, and letting you know that there's more to come, right? There's more to come to this. There's more to come to this journey. We're just getting started. We're, we're, we're going, we're in transition. We're going from one, from one way to another way from, you know, 
you know, kindergarten or first grade, if you will, kind of thing. And because we've gone through that, that kindergarten, we're going to the next stage. And, and, um, yeah, the treasures within the treasures within. Okay. Then the next one was, um, Oh, 14, card number 14, the crystal path. This one tends to make me emotional. <laughs> oh, there are some cards in this deck that make me so emotional, but we'll see how I do earlier. I got pretty emotional, so fair warning. The crystal path, mineral spirits, crystal beings. There are crystals that connect and communicate, both with whom the earth and those which lie in their stores and in their homes are part of a greater crystal community. And even while they may be far from their birthplace, they are often called into meetings with origin crystals, which transfer more of their gifts to each of the crystals related to them. In this way, you are part of a soul family where even uh, we're even, what, sorry, where even when you may not be physically present, you are called in to commune and soak up the energies necessary for your soul on its journey. Each of us is a part of a soul group and family. And when we connect with crystals, we too are becoming a part of their soul family and they become part of ours and our past for a time inter intertwine and weave about. You will be called into the master class for the soul soon. When you are, the, when you are there will be crystals present charging you with the energy of the crystalline energies that are both of this world and galactic and universal. This crystal path is cared for by those who understand the mineral magic that of the earth and know that it connects to the other worlds, other planets, other times and places and beings. The crystal path is opening up before you and the deepest lessons of these sentient mineral beings is yours to explore now. Illumination. I am part of a crystal family and I am called home to work with them. A path has been prepared for me to find them. Oh man. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> um crystals. They're magical and alive and meant for us, especially. Um, you know, if you see a crystal, you hold a crystal, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how much it is. It could be $5, $500. It could be absolutely beautiful and it can maybe look like not much, but when you connect with it, you, um, you feel something that draws you in, in a very, very special way, in a very special way. I'm going to turn up the light and see if this helps it, because this is really annoying. <laughs> I've been annoyed enough today, to be quite honest. I'd rather have it a little bright in here than this bullshit with this camera, honestly. I think it's going to help, because there we go. Now it's really bright. Holy shit. All right, whatever. At least I'm going to stay in focus. Um, maybe I can. Oh, I hate reaching over this table and fall on it. Maybe that'll do it. Sorry. Sorry for this production bullshit. It just is what it is. Okay, I think we're going to be okay now. Okay. So, crystals. <laughs> So the crystals are, um, are aside from them having a certain vibration, each different type of crystal has a different vibration. And we know that they help us with certain things. Um, quartz crystal, which is what this is. This is one of my absolute, like I can't with this thing. Look at that. Oh my God, I can't, it's just so beautiful. Um, so they're not only like what we know them to be, to have a certain frequency and to help us with cords. Cords really, it, it does everything. It clears, it heals, it amplifies, it, it grounds. It's just, 
it's it's the everything crystal and I, I definitely have it in abundance along with um, amethyst and so those are my two this is a really 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 dark amethyst it even has green in it green amethyst um which is super rare i love that thing anyway um, <laughs> Ah, crystals. So a few months back, I got connected uh, really deeply with Merlin. And Merlin is all about magic and crystals and, um, and the power of and what what crystals really, really are and their sentience as, as we just read. They're, they're, they're pro they they're and just to say program they're they're alive beings that receive information for us and this is what i was i was shown i was taken to this beautiful crystal palace and it wasn't it was like a mountain a, 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 i call it a pa palace or castle it was this beautiful crystal mountain that looked like a castle but it was just all because a castle is man-made and the crystal and the crystal castles gaia made it's all crystal and the crystals are 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 more of Gaia's babies they're they're like us or plants or animals that kind of thing and um they're meant for us each one that we're meant to have that is out in the world is meant to come to us and be with us either for our entire lives or we're meant to um uh, move them on to other people that they're meant to be with with the reprogramming so what we're what we're being called to ask, and I have a, a an article coming out, and I'm, so I'm not going to get too too much into it here right now because we want to get to the meditation sooner than later, and I, I have yet to pull more cards. So <laughs> this is going to be kind of long, but um, we're just to really connect with the crystals that that we've already been guided to that we already have and to understand and to recognize that they're not just like oh obsidian that helps me clear energy and is protective blah 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 we're to think about our our crystals as being a being and being a being that receives and like i was talking about the crystal palace when we went there and we went in and i was shown what they are and this talks about how there's beings that work with the crystals. There are a very particular type of fairy that um, are just that they're the ones that take care of the crystals that are cut that will are to come out of Gaia very specifically. Um, the ones that stay in Gaia that aren't being you know, taken out from her body yet, um, they have a whole different thing going on. But the ones that are coming out into the world are connected to, to the ones that are within the body. And, um, and so those, those ones that are coming out, like this one that came out, or this one that came out, or this one that came out, all of these that came out that I have here on my, on my table. Um, here's an Amazonite. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to do a, a totally separate, like, video about crystals because um, I can really get into this. I also have a service that's called Crystal Gathering with Gaia, where you basically send me to my local, it's practically wholesale. It's how I can have all this stuff because it's so ridiculously cheap compared to any place else that I've ever seen, even online, for getting crystals. Um, and they're handpicked by this couple that have been doing this for like 15, 20 years, however long they've been doing it. Um, and I go to their store, I, I channel Gaia and I walk the store and I'm drawn to the crystals that are meant for you. And then I send them to you. So I'm part of this chain of custody of getting your crystals to you. And it's one of the most, my most favorite things. I also create um, uh, platforms for the crystals to charge on so they can receive the energy even better for you. And you can connect with them and receive that energy. Just, it's just this whole thing. So you can look all of it. You can look that up on my website. Um, so just to have in your consciousness that, that each, each crystal that you have has a, a very particular purpose to um, to receive and to connect with you. So it can receive and connect with you and um, and 
and spend time with them thinking about you know their energy and what what what's coming through through them to you and just know this is this is a thing it's always been a thing but um that awareness just hasn't come through to the consciousness of the collective and it is now for us to understand that they're actually very sentient that they need to um that they have this power to to receive and to give us information very you know in a very active and patent and, and intentional way and a very passive way by just being in our environment and actively then then holding and connecting and being with with the the actual crystal in meditation and when we're when we're guided to be with any different particular crystal that we may have and um and 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 feel their their very particular energy and as i pick up each different one it feels very very different the energy that comes from them um so anyway those were the cards that we got earlier um that i was you know to go over with you these being very important so most likely in our meditation um the sacred journey will be up and so you know crystals being a part of it for the uh for the new moon crystals were a part of that as well and um and so it, okay my whatever reason the speaker just stopped being connected All right, <laughs> whatever. Um, uh, I'm going to, I like to take pictures sometimes of, of the, the cards that come out of reads so I can have that to tap into and remember later on. So just bear with me because I'm going to be putting these back into the deck because they may come out again. And if they do, then that's just a really amplified double double on the messages is what I was just told because I was just going to keep them out and then I was told no, we're putting them in. So, so we're putting them in. I'm just going to take a picture here. Yeah, let's see what I don't know if I need flash, but it's not working anyway. All right, that's that tracks that tracks with my day. Um, <laughs> okay, um, so we're gonna put back these moonology cards and we're gonna put back these hidden hidden world cards. We're gonna take my hair out of there. And first, we're going to do a couple of these moonology cards. We're going to clear the energy. And for whatever reason, I'm meant to do this twice. We're meant to get these messages. Um, so we're just going with it. So thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for dealing with the fuzzies before I finally clued in. I just, just turned the light on or up. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it would be worse if it was you couldn't hear me clearly and I was choppy than not seeing me. I think so. I think we're okay. Uh, why well, won't this stay? It's like either it won't stay lit or I can't get it to stop burning sometimes. It's like, can I have a little happy medium here? In between. So I just like to use sage and palo santo. I keep them in a bowl. This is my, my sage and palo santo bowl. It used to be clear if you could see that, but completely charred. It's just I'm always in there. And I'm always, always, always constantly torching my sage and my palo santo for clearing cards and just energy. Okay, so that's done. Now you'll see this won't stop. Okay, so let's see what we get from Moonology. I'm told that what I'm going to do is just shuffle here. 
And we're gonna get three more cards. Whoa, that happened easily. These two and this one. Okay. And I think we have two that we just had. Yep, the answers you seek or need are coming. We're getting this twice. So full moon in Gemini, question answer, soul, soul to soul, soul family. Um, another thing that, oh yeah, another thing that came up with the, with the Crystal Palace was about, um, it talked about being part of a soul family. So that theme coming up again, connecting with soul family. So with the crystal, with the crystal path, it was connecting with the crystals and being um, put on the path to get and receive crystals that are meant for us because it's really important to our development. Um, but it was also, I heard chimed in there, I just forgot to mention that it was like, see, more soul family stuff. It's a, it's a very big theme. So the answers you, you need are coming. Um, don't let the past hold you back. We got this again. So again, messages for cord cutting, for releasing, for healing. Um, this is this is really a card that's saying you really need to let go of energies. Don't let the past hold you back. Do cord cutting. Do the meditations to integrate with the inner child. Do the money wound meditation. Do the meditation for body love and connecting with your um, guardian angel. So they can help you move forward. They're really good at that. And it's time to take action. New moon in Aries. It's time to take action. So we got one new card here. Very strong. New moon energy coming in. Um, it's time to take action. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. It's time to take action. It means we've had our stasis. We've had our solitary. We've had our are um, quite literally through the pandemic for a lot of people. Um, we've had um, we've had time of just of just hermit hangman introspection, getting into balance within ourselves. And now it's time to to let things go and flow and come out of us. Don't forget, we had that card that says show the world the real you. That means put out into the world what needs to come out into the world real world not just tell your friends and family that you're you're a woo woo spiritual person and you you're into energy healing and cards and crystals but to express into the world to create and put out into the world what is supposed to come through you and that's also something that is very much helped by the crystals that we have um, helping us receive those those downloads and and upgrades and all that good stuff so there we go with with our moonology so feel here and it won't go away okay whatever. <laughs> moving on um so we're gonna pick one card i'm hearing so we already got the two so we're picking one more card here Okay. The seer. The seer. Look at that. What does she have? A crystal. <laughs> the seer. Uh, future prospects, decisions to make, seeking advice. Card number 41 the seer. And there she is holding this beautiful, uh, looks like a clear crystal quartz like i was just talking yep that is a clear crystal quartz and she's in this looks like looks like a palace she's got um there's a tree right outside this where this column is and a waterfall and she's in the mountains and oh my goodness this seer future prospects decisions to make seeking guidance so one more look at it connecting with her beautiful crystal and you can see she's like holding it like you would hold a kitten or a puppy and she's looking at it like i'm and the crystal is is has all this energy and light coming through it and it's just it, emitting that and oh it's so beautiful still i didn't get too emotional that's good that's good <laughs> 
So card number 41, the seer. Who's that? Hi, kitty. Um, okay. Future prospects, decisions to make, seeking guidance. Hi, love bug. Can you see his face? No, you can't. He's right over here. He's so cute. Um, okay. Once, okay, let's start over. <laughs> Once, when we sought to understand what would come to us next in our lives, we turned to the seers and the wise ones who knew the use and the sacred, who knew the uses and the sacred tools, who gazed into their depths and saw patterns emerge that would apply to our lives. Now we are most often our own seer, or we entrust ourselves to the reader or the friend or the counselor who understands our psyches. But with this card, you are asked to trust that there is a cosmic seer, a seer of the hidden world who is gazing into her crystal orb for you. Trust that she sees what will come and will whisper to you through dreams and signs uh, the unfolding of the future to come and through the crystals, your, your own crystals I'm hearing. She will murmur to you in moments of peace, strange words, um, so you can create what must be done in the present so the future can be what it is for you. So you can have your guidance, basically. Some of what is to come to us is written. It is, so sorry, let me start that over. Some of what is to come to us is written. It is a part of the structure of our soul that certain events or people and possibilities will link with us and intertwine with our days. But there are also events that we create and we choose, and this is where she can help you. She asks you now to look deeply, to make choices that are in your own best interests, to unravel some of the distance between yourself and spirit that has developed. Take up the precious tools once again, take a moment to see clearly and know that the ancient one, the seer is with you to help you in the future that is bright and bright with prospects, rich with meaning. Give thanks for what is yet to come. And as the mystery shows herself, be ready. <laughs> Illumination, I see my future clearly and create it consciously with every choice I make in the present. Oh, it's so rich and gooey, I love it. Oh. oh, that's so good. So good, okay, so hi, what's up my love? What's that? That's what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. That's my boy. That's my boy. Hi. Hi, gorgeous thing. No, you can't come on my table. You don't need to come on my table. You don't need to come on my table. This is my Labradorite. Isn't it beautiful? Let's see if I can make it shine for you up here without too much glare. It's just so beautiful. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's just hard. You have to get, oh, there we go. Without the glare, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult, but right here I found sweet spot. Oh, the seer. So yeah, so I love that line. So give thanks and be grateful for what has yet to come because it's coming and the more grateful you are in the moment for what has yet to come. Uh, the sweeter the landing and the faster it comes, I hear. So, um, this is about, uh, <laughs> this is about being guided. This is about being open to receiving. This is about, um, connecting with the other side, with, um, reaching through, especially at these times, the full moon and, and, um, and what we're getting into with the, with our, uh, really, <laughs> um, with the portal coming up on the third. So it's a really short window between the 27th and the third, what we have, I think, 27, 28, 29, I'm sorry, it's 27, 28, so one, uh, so like four days between the full moon and the 
and the stargate so this full moon is designed really just normally it's more like a week um but unless it's the 12 uh well it depends actually so no, i take that back um i was gonna say like 12 31 and, and but not yeah never mind <laughs> we've had full moons on the 31st i think it was last year the year before it was like oh boy um and then the stargate starting for one one on the very next day so but that's not an all an always thing anyhow this with this month we have the the full moon just a couple of days before the stargate begins and we and the way that stargates it's like it's already ramping up into that stargate and real quick stargates are 10 days every month so one one to one ten two two to two twelve three three to three thirteen eight eight to eight eighteen uh twelve twelve to twelve twenty one you know that that kind of deal um and, and then we have a landing day so you, so it's actually 11 days um but because that landing day counts it's like we arrived boom and then we have a landing day but anyway that time period every single month starting at the very beginning of the month and like taking all the way to 12 12 so it moves moves further into the month when we have our stargate ends later in the month when we have our stargate as we move into the year the um we start our potentialities with let me do it this way we start our potentialities in the the beginning of the year with like, the big part of the funnel and we get smaller towards the end towards december here and then we come back out into the january so it's literally like doing this every single year and um and so this full moon being right on top of the stargates really propelling the energy for us and the stargates are all about timeline collapsing creating and solidifying so this is when like big events will happen this is when big will be pushed to make big choices big decisions people will, will act in very um sudden and and kind of like explosive it's like almost like a full moon every day is like kind of like what a stargate is but i don't want to make it like like not that a full moon's negative or anything like that but it'll be like really intense shifts and changes in the paradigm of our the micro and the macro um you know our lives and what's going on on a global scale and you'll see like oh it's the stargate and look boom like one day into the stargate we're having this happen we're having this happen we're having this happen this person did this this person did that this is how I feel now I've making no you'll see even yourself you'll you'll see yourself like oh okay like all of a sudden I'm doing this and I wasn't doing this two days ago it's really interesting what goes down into stargate and the incoming energies for each different month and what that represents but on a whole it is about creating solidifying collapsing timelines so we can rise higher higher up into the year higher up into you know every year we're moving forward we're moving forward so each and every month we have 10 days and if you map those days out and what goes on every single month with those days with yourself with others with the world and then the seven days before the seven days after and see where those new moons full moons um eclipses equinoxes and all that good stuff um solstices and the other galactic portals and times where we're having really big downloads coming in with meteors and asteroids and all this good stuff all of it's connected all of it's tied in and of course we have to take into account what's going on with our mother gaia and her body and how she's dealing and transmuting these energies and how we are because we're with her we're on her she's holding us literally so it's like a mother holding a baby what she's experiencing baby's experiencing so for us to feed to for us to not be flailing around and just going with the flow the better grounded the better connected the better healed and cleared and and open to spirit so we can feel and be guided and again back to the seer it's in your every day being able to connect to that to that energy um and 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 the seer also has has guardian angel energies to the seer coming through um you know kind of seeing higher perspectives of like you would see like if the seer was a card in the tarot she would be the the high priestess just seeing things ahead of time and then telling 
telling your best friend, go tell her that this is coming. So your guardian angel is filter, helping to filter through and make it easier for you to understand. So that's why it's also important to, to have this relationship with your guardian angel. And um, the better you're in love with yourself, the better you'll feel the love from your guardian angel. So that's why body love and guardian angel connection were put together in that same meditation that I talked about earlier. So I invite you to take a look at that. Very important. Very important for, for your connections to be in a open, intentional, um, communicative, going back and forth relationship with your immediate guardian angel and whatever archangels that you're attached to as well. Because sometimes your guardian angel is like your is so close to you that sometimes if you're really upset or you're really whatever, it may even be hard to hear our guardian angel. And that's when archangels tend to come in where our guardian angels will call in archangels or will prompt us to call in archangels because they have, um, they're just a bit more, more powerful and how, how they can come through and connect with you. So that's also something to take into consideration. But also coming in and, and, and with the seer, she talks about the, it talks about the journey, the path. So all of the cards that came out are talking about the path, the crystal path. Um, the sacred journey is a path. And this with the seer is a path, the path to the future path going forward. This talks about future prospects, decisions to make, seeking guidance for our future, right? So it's it's either, um, you know, go and be, and be guided to those who can really dig deep and give you um, divine information that are that are of the light, that are connected, that that are part of that, that group of souls that are here to give messages. If not with me, then with somebody else that you trust and that you believe is the real deal that wants to just give you all the love and support and isn't out, you know, just to make a buck kind of thing and to tell you what you want to hear, because that's not going to help you. Um, you need to hear what you need to hear and in a loving, caring way. Okay. So with that said, dear, beautiful soul, thank you so much for joining me here on this pre-meditation part of the, of the meditation for the full moon. The next portion is just going to be audio and that is going to come in directly after this. I want to thank you so much for being here. I want to remind you again, eBooks, meditations, and, um, the, the, uh, the reads that I did for the full moon, please check those out. There's going to be more coming. I have yet to get the, the decisions made, the downloads from my guidance to tell me what exactly I'm going to be doing. I thought I was going to be doing Stargate, um, Stargate reads, but I'm, I'm not totally sure that that's what I'm going to do. Um, so anyway, but stay tuned because I will have very important reads this month. I will have, um, a a lot of meditations coming your way in March. Um, I already have a list going of what, just the themes of what we're gonna be working on. I'm super excited about it. Um, those are gonna get started right away after this full moon. So please, um, if this is a new channel to you, please subscribe, please hit the bell. So you're notified of when um, new stuff comes out. Please go to my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. Go get your, your eBooks there, subscribe to my website um, and so you can get information on what I have coming out. I do send emails to people who have downloaded from me before, but you don't get all of the emails that I send out. You'll get kind of here and there because you haven't subscribed. You just downloaded. So if you go and you also subscribe, you'll get all of my emails. You'll know everything that I'm doing, special events, discounts. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll throw out coupons and um, just all sorts of different stuff, downloads and energy updates. You'll know when I have videos and articles come out. You'll know when I'm going live um, in the future, stuff like that. I do go live period whenever I'm getting. So I will be doing more of that in the future. So anyway, I want to thank you again for being here. I want to wish you a very happy, healthful, and wealthful uh, full moon for you. And going into this new beautiful month of March, please take care of yourself. Please give yourself all the love and attention that you deserve. 
please be in love with yourself. Um, please make yourself a priority. And while you send love out into the world and connecting, um, spending time connecting with nature, with Gaia, with your guides, and most importantly, with your own soul. And with that said, family, I'm going to say goodbye to with this portion. We're going to start up with the meditation. And um, I'll see you soon.